Defender Jeff Clark's delight at scoring this Richmond Park goal last Sunday perfectly illustrated the joy of everybody at St. Patrick's Athletic in retaining their FAI National League crown. I thought last season after winning it down the Centennial, come on back to win it here in Inter Park. It's been amazing. Brilliant day for us so far. It's a great, great time for St. Pat's Athletic. We've come on leaps and bounds in the last uh, well done, well done. six, seven years. And uh, hopefully with Liam at the helm now, uh, he'll take it on another step. Came back here, signing three-year contracts. So two years done, two league medals. It's unbelievable. I'm only 21, so it's a great feeling. Last year is a different feeling, you know, uh, being the underdog and everything against us except uh, one way out, and we nipped it. So this year it was good to be the strongest side throughout the whole year. Brilliant on that path, but you see him the lane with playing some decent football. He plays a lot of good football this year, like you know. I'll take you away with Pat on last year, you know, we won the league with a lot of hard work, but this year we played a lot of good football. It meant a lot more this season, you know, the first year we were maybe a little bit lucky in the end, but uh, this year we, we, I think we were the best team all season. It's just, it meant an awful lot to every one of us. We worked so hard for this and Liam Buckley came in and has done a brilliant job for us, so we're very, very proud of what he's done. I knew there was a huge amount of technique when I came in here, taking them for training. You really see how good they are in training when I look at the likes of Hawkins and McGuinness and Jeff Clarks and the Thomas Morgan technique boys and Trevor Malloy. Like, they have a huge amount of technique. Um, equally as good as Team I've ever been, ever been in, involved with. Um, and I knew after a couple of weeks that we have got a good chance of being there, thereabouts at the end of the season. And obviously I wanted to qualify for Europe. We started off quite well, and I think the team won up in Derry when Pat was in charge for the first game. Then I got in charge after that, and we went on a bit of a run. It was always tight with Cork and ourselves. Um, I think after eight or nine matches, we played Cork here, which was obviously a crucial match, bearing in mind the situation right now. So Pat's there with the shots, and it's buried. Pat's take the lead. skill again here by Osam. For Gilzine, he's got a man on an overlap. Up from Malloy, it's there, and this should be two, and it is! St. Pat's running riot! The next big hurdle would be back down in Cork because we both went on a, a run and it kept on going until after Christmas. Um, there was li little or nothing between us. We got the rub of the green down there. When I look back and it, it was ridiculous for it to be coming out and winning that match 2-1. They were all over us. They were winning 1-0. It could have been 3 or 4. I was only too delighted to get them in at half time to tell them that. It was great, we're only going down. Um, we juggled a couple of things around, got a lucky break. Um, Leon Blake was an excellent, and Stephen McGuinness scored. Um, and I believe me, that was a fantastic win. There was no really worrying points. I, I think we played down in Waterford and we drew nil all, and they beat Bowes. I think if the results had to go in the opposite way, I think the league was over. But then after that, then we got a draw here against UCD and things. People were starting to question whether we could win it or not. And I think the turning point for my, my side of things was when we went up to Finn Harps and we won 3 0 up at Finn Harps. I think that result really, really gave people belief that we were capable of winning the league. This build up led to a real clash of the Titans at the end of April when Cork City returned to Richmond Park for the final time. It was no surprise that a game with so much at stake threw up a couple of controversial moments. What happened was uh, the referee apparently blew for a foul uh, when the ball was knocked into the corner. The guy's headed back across. I made the save. I was in the back of the net, but my hand was in front of the goal. Uh, and uh, apparently the foul was before that, so it, it wasn't a goal disallowed, it just was a foul. The goal was a corner. Trevor Malloy took it and went to the back post. And Martin Riley, he could only really not have back across the goal. And I was standing at the, at the near post originally, which was near the back post. <laughs> it just fell, I just, I just had to make contact with it and it was in. It was, it was free really then at that stage. You've beat on near Strugglers three times here, you're bound to win the league. And we bet Cog three times. You fair to Cog maybe once or twice, you could have gotten a draw or a win in here. You know, but um, we came out on top and I think we deserved it in the end. We had a record amount of points last year. 
but we've ended up beating that this year. So we're, we're going from strength to strength. We're getting better and better. And we're all just looking forward to, to Europe in the summer and we just want to do ourselves proud in that. The title has gone to St. Pat's, so they will go into the Champions League qualifying rounds in the summer. Cork City will go into the UEFA Cup with whoever wins the FAI Harplager Cup on Sunday. Dundalk and Bray Wanderers were relegated, while Bohemians should confirm their safety through the playoffs against Cove Ramblers.